an era can come to an end. The Eric Ten Hag era has come to an end at Manchester United. Even though he might think that his tenure was a success because he won two trophies, it was far from it. So how bad was Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United? Stick with us as we uncover the records he broke and his major transfer gaffes. But before we start, for Manchester United fans who had to experience this. So I'm sorry for you. Like Drake said, from the bottom, now we're here. and that's exactly where Manchester United were after losing their opening two games in Ten Hag's first competitive games as Man United manager. His era started off with a 2-1 loss to Brighton. That was the first time in the club's history United have lost at home against the Seagulls, and the first time in eight years that the team lost an opening game. In his next match versus Brentford, there was the opportunity to bounce back, but what happened was even more shocking than his first result. Goals from Josh De Silva, Mateus Jensen, Ben Mee, and Brian Embuemo all scored in the first half, saw the Bees humiliate the Ten Hag-led team with a 4-0 victory over United. The loss was Manchester United's first league loss to Brentford since 1938, 86 years ago. Manchester United fans were expecting a possession-dominating style like Ajax, but what they were getting was something similar to relegation fodder. Ten Hag, however, would get his first win at United against bitter rivals Liverpool. This result sparked an upturn in form until it all came crashing down again. In his first taste of the Manchester Derby, Ten Hag presided over a 6-3 loss, with Erling Haaland and Phil Foden scoring a hat-trick apiece. This was the first time two players scored hat-tricks against Manchester United in a league match ever. Despite the tough start, Manchester did win the Carabao Cup over Newcastle. But following the high of winning a trophy, United would come crashing down once again. On March 5th, Manchester United experienced one of their most humiliating defeats ever and their heaviest ever to Liverpool. A 7-0 loss with Mohamed Salah, Darwin Nunes, and Cody Gakpo scoring braces. Despite having zero away wins against the Big Six, Eric Ten Hag's team would finish the season in third place, leading to optimism of taking the next step the following season. But things would unravel quickly into the opposite direction. The 2023-2024 season was Eric Ten Hag's worst campaign with the Red Devils. He managed a controversial 1-0 win over Wolves in the opening match, thanks to a wrongly disallowed late equalizer by Wolves. But Ten Hag would get back to his record-breaking form against Tottenham. Prior to the match, Manchester United had never lost at Tottenham's new stadium. That streak was broken with a 2-0 loss. Another loss against Crystal Palace had made it four losses out of seven to make it United's worst ever start to a Premier League season. In the Champions League, Ten Hag would break new records, just not ones Manchester United fans would be proud of. In their opening match, they would lose 4-3 to Bayern Munich, marking the first time in 28 years that Manchester United conceded four goals in the Champions League group stages. The second group stage match did not get any better. Galatasaray had never won a match on English soil. That's until they met Ten Hag's Manchester United. They go on to win 3-2, further highlighting the Red Devils' early season woes. United would finish last in their Champions League group, the first time in their history. They would also concede 15 goals, which set the record for most goals conceded in the group by an English team. How did Ten Hag's defense of the EFL Cup go? Uh, not so good. In a rematch of last year's final, Newcastle beat Manchester United 3-0, marking United's largest home defeat to Newcastle since 1930. To add to the embarrassment, Newcastle manager Eddie Howe used the last bit of the match as a training session for some of his players. However, he was able to end the season with a trophy, seeing off Manchester City in the FA Cup final at Wembley to book a place in the Europa League. The domestic season was a bit of a disaster, though. Ten Hag's team finished 8th in the Premier League, their worst ever finish in the Premier League era. Defensively, the team was in shambles as well conceding 58 league goals, a Premier League high. They also had the minus one goal difference, the first negative goal difference for United in the Premier League era. He also still hadn't recorded an away win against a big six side. 
United's new co-owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his INEOS team, unconvinced by the Dutchman's benchmarks, embarked on a lengthy review, consulted possible replacement options before offering him a new contract. Surviving sack on a needle inch, would Ten Hag be able to prove the doubters wrong? Eric Ten Hag opened the 2024-2025 Premier League with a slim victory over Fulham, but that would be his only win in the first three matches. Brighton beat the Red Devils again before a humiliating 3-0 drubbing at home by Liverpool. After the Liverpool loss, Ten Hag saved face with a 3-0 away victory against struggling Southampton before EFL Cup third-round win over second division side Barnsley. The two wins over lowly rated sides marked the beginning of a winless five-match run in all competitions, which left the team on their worst start to a Premier League or European campaign for the second time in his third season. A 2-1 loss to West Ham marked the end of the Ten Hag era, as he was sacked the day following the match. Before we go to see his bad transfer decisions, I'm going to give you this stat. In Manchester United's 30-year Premier League history, they only conceded two 90th-minute-plus winners. Under Ten Hag, they conceded six, and he was only there for a bit more than two seasons. £84 million signing from Ajax Antony has been the face of Eric Ten Hag's bad transfer decisions at Manchester United. After a promising start to the campaign in 2022, the Brazilian winger has slipped into unplayable form. To make matters worse, Antony's Ajax teammate Mohamed Kudus, who also played under Ten Hag, was bought for half the price and has been one of the most dynamic wingers in the league. Mason Mount's £55 million transfer was another blunder that happened under Ten Hag's watch. Seemingly without a real position in the team and a horrid injury record, Mount's transfer looks worse day by day. As if be given the number 7 wasn't bad enough, Chelsea used that transfer coup to buy Cole Palmer, who's taken the Premier League by storm. An outgoing transfer that will be a regret for Ten Hag will be that of Alvaro Fernandez. The young left-back's move to Benfica was sanctioned for £7.7 .7 million. What makes this transfer so bad is that Manchester United face an injury crisis for most of the 2023-2024 season and the start of the 2024-2025 season. Both starting and reserve left-backs Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malaysia have been injured, resulting in makeshift left-backs like Diago Delo and Lissandro Martinez both of whom are not natural left-backs. All the while, Alvaro Fernandez is excelling with Benfica, and rumors having it that Manchester United are interested in buying him back for $16 million, all of which could have been saved if they had not let him go in the first place. So, how bad was Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United? Historically bad. From his miscalculated transfers, tactical blunders, falling out with players, and a stubbornness to not change, do you think Ruben Amorim is the man to turn United's fortunes? Let us know down below. With that, we come to an end. Until next time.